Welcome to this video on the topic of decimals, division and danger. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can divide a decimal number by an integer. Now division can be thought of as the opposite operation to multiplication. As such it can be thought of as splitting a whole amount into equal size smaller amounts. This is visualized with the circle over here. The circle is the whole amount and the splitting in this case it's been split into five equal portions. Now this looks nice and tidy however if you think about it with a number line imagine that we have a size 11 number line over here and we want to split it into five equal portions. What you'll notice is that each portion doesn't equal the size of a whole number rather it's somewhere between two and three closer to two so we get a decimal result for the size of the smaller portions. Now what we're going to look at in this particular lesson is how we can divide a decimal number by an integer or how we can split a decimal number into in this case three equal portions here. Now this can be done using the simple division algorithm. Setting this up I first need to identify my divisor. In this case my divisor is three over here so what I'm going to go and do is I write down three like so. The next step is I need to identify my dividend, my dividend being this number over, or this number shown here. So I'm going to write that next to my divisor, remembering to put in my decimal point. After that, I'm then going to draw in my quotient symbol to show that I'm going for division. And then I'll draw a nice straight bar right across to, the, or to show that we're going for division. All right, perfect, I'm all set up. Next step is I need to start dividing. Now looking at this, what I'm going to do is my divisor is here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way across one number at a time, like so. So starting off, I'm going to ask how many times can I fit three inside of three? In this case, I know three ones are three, so therefore three goes into three once. Moving across, I go to the zero. 3 fits into 0, 0 amounts of times, 3 fits into 6 twice, 3 fits into 3 once, I get the decimal point and it instantly goes upstairs, 3 fits into 9 3 times, 3 fits into 0 0 times, and 3 fits into 3 once. So what we can see is that the quotient or the result of this division is 1000, 1021 point three oh one. So this is a nice simple example because everything fits in quite nice, nice and tidy. There's no carries, there's no borrowing, there's no dropping down. Nice and simple. Alright, let's spice it up a little. Let's go over to B. In B we have 2.856 divided by 7. Now once again we're going to divide this using the exact same method we did before. We first identify our divisor which is 7 and then we write down our dividend which is 2.856. After which I'm going to draw in the quotient symbol to signify that we're going for division. Alright it is now time to shine performing this division, we have a look at 7 and we say how many times could 7 fit into 2? In this case it doesn't so I put a 0. Next I put the decimal place up and I combine, I do it in orange, I'll combine 2 and 8 together. I then ask myself how many times does 7 fit into 28? And thinking back to my times tables, I know that 7 fits into 28 four times. Now moving across, I look at 5. How many times does 7 fit inside of 5? Well, it fits zero amount of times because 7 is too big. And thus, I combine the 5 and the 6 together and I ask myself, how many times does 7 fit inside of 56? And I know that it's going to fit eight times. So therefore, the result of 2.856 divided by 7 is simply going to be 0 0.408. Nice and simple once again. 
In this instance, the complexity comes from the friendship bridge we're putting in here. So when that doesn't fit, we build a friendship bridge and then look at the two numbers together. And as a disclaimer, it's not actually called a friendship bridge, but that's what we'll call it. All right, perfect. Let's go up one more degree of complexity. We have C, 3.54 divided by five. Once again, we're going to apply the exact same algorithm we've used before to find the, or find the quotient of 3.54 divided by five. Starting off, I identify my divisor as five, and my dividend is 3.54. Setting this up, draw my symbols best I can. All right, now let's go in for the kill. We're going to go for five going into three. We think that five doesn't go into three, so we're going to give it a zero. We combine the three and the five. How many times does five fit into, fit into 35? Well, it goes seven times remembering to put my decimal point up here. And then I have a look, I see five going into four. Now the problem here is that five doesn't fit inside of four. So I've got this issue where I've got to deal with this four here. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a zero after my four, because I'm not actually changing the value. And then I'm going to extend this quotient symbol across. I then ask myself, how many times does 5 go inside of 40? In which case I know that 5 is going to fit into 40 8 times. So therefore, I know that the quotient of this division is going to be 0 0.708. Verifying that this is true, I can bring up my calculator and I can go 3.54 divided by 5 and what you notice is it's 0.78, so we agree here. All right, let's move on. One more degree of complexity, D. What we're trying to do in this one is divide 37.632 by seven. Carrying this out, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than the previous ones. Starting off, I identify my divisor, which is seven, and I identify my dividend, which is 37.632 after which I'm going to draw in my quotient symbol okay now going for the division what we're going to do is we first start off by asking ourselves how many times does 3 or how many times does 7 fit inside of 3 in this case 7 is greater than 3 so it's got to be 0 times we then build our friendship bridge Next one along, we ask ourselves, how many times does seven fit inside of 37? Now the closest number that's less than, less than 37, I can think of is five, which is seven fives. So therefore we put the 35 below and we go for the subtraction. So seven take five is two and three take three is zero. Moving that along, we bring the closest number down, which is the six, and we're passing the decimal point, so we just bring it upstairs like so. Next one along, we build a friendship bridge between the two and the six, and we ask ourselves, how many times does seven fit inside of 26? Uh, when I think back, my three times tables tell me it's 21 or 28. 21 is smaller, so we're going to go seven times three, which is 21. And therefore it goes into 26, three times. Performing the subtraction, six take away one is five, and two take away two is zero. Bringing down the three, and then building the friendship bridge between the 53. Now what we're looking at is we ask ourselves how many times does 7 fit inside of 53? Now thinking back to our 7 times tables, uh, 7 sevens are 49. So what we can say is that 7 fits inside of 53 7 times and therefore we've got to subtract 49. Going in for this we need to do a borrow of 
4 becomes 13. So therefore, 13 take 9 is going to be 4. 4 take 4 is 0. And then finally, bringing down the 2, we get 42. Building our friendship bridge, we then ask ourselves, how many times does 7 fit inside of 42? And of course, the answer to that is 6. So what we find in this instance is that oops, the division of 37.632 divided by 7 is going to be 5.376. So in summary, what we had a look at in this lesson was how we can divide a decimal by an integer number. In the next lesson, we'll have a look at how we can divide a decimal number by another decimal.